Right now, right, China uses lithium-ion phosphate batteries in almost all their cars. Not all of them, but almost. In the US, only a very tiny fraction of the EVs on the road and the EVs for sale today use lithium-ion phosphate batteries. The rest of them use mostly NMC batteries. Not all of them, but mostly NMC lithium batteries. So why is that? And how are things gonna play out? Well, in this video, I'm gonna explain why. But secondly, my prediction is this. I believe a very large number of EVs in the US by 2035 will be lithium-ion phosphate. In fact, I'd say it's gonna be at least 50% even though today it's only about 2%. About 80% of the EVs in China produced this year, well, they've all had lithium ion phosphate batteries, not the batteries with nickel. So most of the market in China has now moved to LFP. That number could be closer to 84%, but it's between 80 to 84% over the last 10 months of the year. And there's a good reason for this, yeah? Lithium ion phosphate batteries are cheap. They are cheap. And did I mention they're cheap? Well, actually, that's the number one reason, to be honest, the affordability. Now they do last for a long time as well. They a lot of people think they last can outlast the life of NMC batteries, but that really is dependent upon the architecture. It really is dependent upon the battery management software, um, the actual pack itself, how it's structured. The cells themselves, though, in theory, can last longer. So there's some advantages to lithium ion phosphate cells. Plus the other advantages is they don't use nickel or cobalt, which potentially can be conflict metals. So LFP batteries can be more profitable, right? You can make a car, an EV that you can actually make a profit on because the batteries are usually around 40% cheaper, but they do have lower energy density. The energy density has improved in some of the newer LFP batteries, particularly uh, Geely's new LFP battery and some new CATL LFP batteries. They've gone over 200 now. So they've definitely improved. Some of them haven't improved. I've talked about that in previous videos. But here's the thing. In the US, you guys don't produce much LFP. Tesla used to use lithium-ion phosphate batteries in their cars in the US until they kind of couldn't anymore because of this new ruling from Trump um, and from Joe Biden as well, uh, the, basically the government said, if you use lithium ion phosphate batteries from China in your EVs, your vehicles won't qualify for EV incentives. And Trump said, well, if you use them in your EVs, then you'll have to pay tariffs for that part of the car. So anyway, Tesla doesn't use the LFP batteries anymore in the US. They're going to make their own at their factory. Well, basically they'll make CATL's batteries under license from them. General Motors are doing the same thing as well. And there are other new factories in the US making lithium ion phosphate batteries too, including Goshan High Tech, which is a, a big Chinese conglomerate, which is owned about one third by the Volkswagen group. But anyway, Rivian's electric van comes with a 100 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery. It's quite a big van. It's their delivery van that Amazon use, I believe as well. It does only provide 161 miles of EPA range though. Charging speed's quite slow too. It's 100 kilowatt DC. So basically these are all the EVs you can get in the US that use lithium ion phosphate batteries. You've also got the Rivian R1S and the Rivian R1T. The refreshed versions of the R1S and the R1T, so the SUV and the pickup truck, both of them come with a 92.5 kilowatt hour battery. So that's the entry level Rivians and they're cheaper for that reason, but estimated range is obviously a little lower. It's at 270 miles. That's EPA range, by the way. So because of those cheaper batteries being used, the R1T and the R1S started about 71,000 US dollars. Now, another car you can get in the US with a lithium ion phosphate battery is the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Just like the Rivian R1S and the R1T, the base model Mach-E gets a 73 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery. Those cells are manufactured by CATL in China. And it provides a range of 260 miles, I believe. If you get it with the all motor, the dual motor version, so two motors, you add an extra motor to the front, then your range will drop to 240 miles. Now, in addition to that, the Chevy Bolt is going to use lithium ion phosphate battery cells from General Motors. And that will provide a cheaper entry level version of the Bolt. But I'll get to that in just a minute. The car that I actually drove, I drove in the US when I was there, was the Tesla Model 3 with lithium-ion phosphate batteries. 
That was the cheapest version of the Model 3. It was called the Rerule Drive, and it came with a lithium-ion phosphate battery pack. The pack was made by Tesla, but the cells were made by CATL. EPA range was 272 miles on a full charge, and the starting price was $38,990. It lost its eligibility, though, for the $7,500 federal tax credit after anti-China provisions or rules kicked in in 2024. So then it wasn't a good deal, and Tesla had to discontinue the car and provide a, an NMC-battery-powered version, which, by the way, had a lot more range. The range actually jumped up in the NMC version uh, by 100 miles. It was a huge difference. Anyhow, there's only four EVs right now with lithium-ion phosphate batteries, so those are the ones I just mentioned. However, a bunch more are coming. Some are coming with the Chevy vehicles, like General Motors EVs will have lithium-ion phosphate batteries. Uh, I believe a Chevy Equinox, the base model, will have lithium-ion phosphate. Plus, in fact, General Motors have said pretty much every base model across their EV range will have LFP batteries within the next couple of years. How long it's going to take, I don't know. But we do know the Chevy Bolt EV, when it comes out in the first quarter of next year, will have a 65 kilowatt hour lithium-ion phosphate battery. And... It's a structural battery pack. So that's going to help reduce weight. Uh, it doesn't have any battery modules. It's called cell to pack configuration, CTP, some BYD call it. I think if we just call it structural battery pack, it's good because then it, uh, all these different manufacturers have different names and it becomes confusing. Anyway, that will make it a little lighter though. But the Chevy Bolt with that battery will have 255 miles of EPA range, which is about the same range as the previous version. But it will charge faster than the previous Chevy Bolt. Charging speed will be 150 kilowatt DC. The Chevy Silverado EV, the base model, will also get a lithium-ion phosphate battery, meaning they'll have a cheaper version of the Silverado EV, which I believe is probably the best electric pickup truck available in the market in the US right now. That said, I do like the Cybertruck as well. In addition to that, the new cheap Ford uh, electric truck, it's sort of like... Um, the Deeple E07 multi-truck, Ford are going to make one. So it's sort of like an SUV that converts into a pickup truck. Ford are going to do one of those and it's going to have a lithium-ion phosphate battery. And that's how they, get, they say they're going to get the price down to thirty to 35000 US dollars for that vehicle. Now, I should mention that those battery cells will be from China's CATL, but they'll be made in the United States at Ford's battery factory in Michigan. So essentially what will happen is Cadle, the world's largest battery manufacturer, they're going to send all their tech and their, all their stuff to build the batteries to the US, to Mich Michigan, and Ford will send their employees there. And then Cadle will teach them how to use these production lines and Ford will pay a royalty fee to Cadle. Tesla are going to do the same thing and so are General Motors. So this is essentially the future of the US auto industry. Probably at least 50% of the batteries in the US by 2035 will be lithium-ion phosphate, even though today only four models are. So today only you know less than 5% of the cars you can buy or that exist on the roads are powered by LFP batteries. But within 10 years, it'll be probably 50 or more percent. And the biggest reason is cost. But also remember, there hasn't been very many recalls of LFP batteries. In fact, very, very few. And there's been a lot of recalls of NMC batteries or NCM batteries, basically nickel, manganese, cobalt, lithium-based batteries. Lots of recalls of those. Been a fair few fires as well. Not heaps of fires. I mean, obviously a lot less than gasoline-powered cars, but they are more likely to have fires for whatever reason. And that's one advantage of LFP as well. Guys, let me know what your thoughts are. How do you see this playing out? Do you think I'm right about my prediction about around 50% market share in the US by 2035? Remember, there are a few factories, quite a few factories. There's also the Goshan High Tech. They're building a lithium-ion phosphate battery factory. There's a few others going up as well from other companies too. Thanks for watching.